I love my job. I get to come uh, to a bar and get some uh, drinks before noon. <laughs> Don't tell my boss. <laughs> but why are we here? We're here to uh, talk to some entrepreneurs who are, who are building a new app for uh, bars and establishments like this called Slinger. And it's a, a, a unique way to monetize for mobile apps. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, mobile monetization and uh, a little bit of alcohol here. It might be fun. <laughs> So who are you? My name is Justin Malvin. I'm the president of Slinger. Uh, I got into uh, social media basically by doing new research and, and uh, for social media marketing and now we've really taken it to the extreme. Yeah. And who are you? I'm Fernando Vasquez, co-founder and VP product of Slinger. I have been a lifelong uh, hacker, technologist, love the web, love to play around yeah. and build. Very cool. So um, wh what is Slinger? Let's just go into it. Well, at Slinger, we, we wanted to build a way for um, people to make deeper connections on social networks. So uh, when you talk about Slinger, what you're really talking about is a way for people to uh, connect uh, through normal social interactions that would happen on the network, but with a deeper connection. So how we do that is we, we, we take the check-in mechanism, which has been established for years, and we allow that check-in to become interactive. And what this means in this case is people at home anywhere in the world can send drinks directly to our table through Slinger, a Slinger check-in, which will post to their social network like any other check-in, but this time it's interactive. And that's, that's Slinger. It all, you know, it, it sounded a little lame to me when I first heard it. It's like, what? <laughs> you know? yeah. But let, let's just do, do one just so we can, uh, and I have one already written, so I'm going to just Yeah, post I'll it. check in with you real fast. And I'm going to ask for, uh, I'm into red wine. So we'll check in now, and we just checked in, and, and that sends it over to Facebook, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Facebook just asked to post us. So, and then it puts a table number. So uh, even yeah. the staff, the staff gets a warning if somebody buys a drink, right, and can bring that drink over, right. And that's one of the things. Yeah, it doesn't. A lot of the apps that involve social gifting, especially for um, food and beverage, they send to you, and you would get like a coupon. Um, so um, in this case, I believe, or yeah, you know, um, what what happens is we send directly to the venue, yeah, and they bring it to you, and the user experience there is. It seems like a small difference, but it's actually dramatically different in the way that you end up interacting with the app. Because our whole thing is, once we put in a table number, um, you, we're done here, you know what yeah. I mean? So we didn't want to make an app where you had to mess with it all the time. You know, the, the venues don't want you doing this. They want you interacting, flirting, yeah. You know, looking at people across the room, watching sports, and ordering more food and drinks. You know? This could be a, a new kind of dating app because if there's a cute, you know, I'm I'm married, so I'm not allowed <laughs> to do this anymore. But if there's a cute girl sitting over there and she checked in. Right, I could buy her a drink and have a drink uh, sent over, and she sees, oh, somebody bought me a drink, and probably here, right? Yeah, we actually turned that off after about two months of trying it in the field. Oh, really? Because it was too creepy. You know, there are very few scenarios where you want that to work out. Um, we had I don't I, know. I'm always in the free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we had an idea for like. I a, guess if Rocky's sending me a free drink, it's like, yeah. hey, Rocky, what's going on? We had an idea for like a Tinder integration yeah. that would work that way, but you can see where like that's a very specific mode where you're opening yeah. yourself up to that, and that's where we could probably do that is if we got together with a company that was already, you know, putting people in that space where they're willing to take, you know, uh, messages from out the outside of their normal friend group. Yeah. Um, but you know, for for the purposes of this, the people that actually send are like high affinity connections to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So friends you've had for a long time, over 50% of the orders on Slinger come from more than 500 miles away. Yeah. And, and that is um, you know, highly indicative of the kind of affinity that drives, you know, sl that drives Slinger, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> my best friend, Andy, just liked my post. There on, you go, uh, right? On, uh, That's exactly the kind of connections we're talking about. It's, it, this is the sort of fun thing that, uh, um, happens with social networks, right? Your friends are all watching you on Facebook and they all uh, 
are like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so Andy and I have lots of uh, experiences at bars. That's yeah. <laughs> there usually, you go. By the way, he usually is working at the Half Moon Bay Brewery. So if, oh, really? He's one of the 12 guys who built the iPhone, so if you ever want to meet him. We him, definitely I'm, should. Yeah, yeah, we should go over there. We're going to, you know, <laughs> we have the rest of the afternoon free. We're kind of trying to decide what to do. But yeah. anyway, you can see how that post is a normal check-in. It looks just like a normal check-in to Andy. Yeah. He doesn't perceive it as advertising. He sees it as Scoble's checked in. Yeah. But we can monetize that because now he can click and buy. Yeah, and, and it says, uh, send Robert some red wine now. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine if all of Facebook's social products had that kind of adless revenue integration. Yeah. What would that do for Facebook's well, culture? Well, not only that, he just, if he clicks on there, he can send me some red wine. He exactly. Didn't, he didn't choose a brand for me, and I didn't choose a brand yet, right? I, I do have my favorites, you know, hey, if I, he can send over some Camus, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Usually we don't have a, a strict brand preference. So now an advertiser could interject and say, hey, I, I'm a Sutter Home and we can uh, double your, your uh, glass. You could get two glasses for free you know, if you go exactly. with us instead of your usual Camus. Exactly, and it's seamless, right? We have yeah. seamless ways of doing that massaging without making the users feel like they're being advertised to. Yeah. That is what Slinger is trying to achieve. You, you see this in bars all the time with Heineken girls who come over and take a survey or something like that, yeah. right? They're paid by yeah. Heineken. You know how much they pay for that? A lot. $500 an hour. Yeah. And we can do it virtually with no operational overhead. So no girls, no swag, no van. But we can do it on the fly in the you know in this in the stream of the interactions our users are already doing, yeah. and it's on a per transaction basis. So we're actually looking for alcohol partners right now who want to get involved in perhaps being featured on the top of the menu as opposed to being in the middle or yeah. something like that. Um, or we can subsidize or them. Or have you know. a special icon next yes. to it, you know. Yes, exactly. And um, we're we're doing those kind of those kind of stuff right now. Or like the, the, the uh, Half Moon Bay Brewery. By the way, where are we right now? Well, this is we're the, at uh, Stein's Beer Garden Stein's in Mountain View. Stein's Beer Garden. Thank you, Stein's. Wherever you are, Ted. <laughs> I don't know where you are. This is one of the first bars that's using Slinger in the Bay Area, right? It's it's currently the only one. Okay. We're actually down in LA. We're based in LA. Yeah. And we're exploding in LA. We're doing two to four new venues a week in LA now. Um, our user growth on the app is like seven to ten percent week over week. Um, and now it's going to, I'm sure, be considerably higher. But um, basically, yeah, you know, so we're doing a lot of great work in LA. That's kind of our ground zero, our base camp. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're getting a lot of phone calls all of a sudden. For How can bars work. get a hold of you to let's see? Here's a glass of water. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's Thank awesome. You very much. That, that, that must be my friend Andy. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, let's see. What does it say? It's cool. Well, you got a note too. Samantha bought me a, a drink. So yeah, that's awesome. it comes with a, you know, it comes Enjoy with a, the Slinger experience at Rocks. Yeah, yeah. So. so it comes with, you know, every every Slinger order comes with a note like this. Yeah. And essentially, yeah, the person says, you know, who obviously it's to you because here you are, but it says who it's from, and 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 everything like that. And then you get your yeah, you get your glass of wine. So let me, let me take a picture of that yeah. while we're filming here. Post that to Facebook too. Yeah. So yeah, and that's uh, your like souvenir to keep. Thanks. So you can see how. Yeah, because now I'll remember Samantha, and if it's my friend Andy, you know, it'll be like, oh, Andy, right. you saw my post, right. so thanks. And you can see how, like, all of a sudden, this thing that seems like a trivial beer app on the surface, yeah. when it's, you know, done right, and we spend a lot of time building, it starts to take on a life of its own and sort of make its way into things. Well, know? this is smart, because all these mobile companies have a problem monetizing. Even Facebook, you know, they're doing pretty good at it, uh, but they can do better. And... The ads that users see, they, they're complaining about it. My, my friend Chris Voss is like, man, all I see on Facebook lately is a bunch of ads. You know? <laughs> I know, right? So that's going to be a problem for Zuckerberg because if he wants to grow revenue, he's already tapped out the inventory. You can't right. put more inventory in there. He's already pissed off. And they said, it. they said in an earnings call, like, we're not going to do more ads. We're going to yeah. do something else. I don't know. You know. Well, they're going to play. They, they uh, bought that company that uh, does the gifting, right? So they played the gifting. Yeah. Karma. That was their first post IPO purchase and yeah. it put us on the map. That's how big a deal that was. Yeah. So before Facebook did that, social gifting wasn't even a thing. Yeah. And then they did that, but as we know, the whole thing had some trouble because the way that works, I mean, I don't know if you've used it, yeah. but the way that works is I email you a gift card for some, you know, I send, I essentially yeah. can send you I've a gift card. I've used it several times. It's actually pretty good, but the gifts were sort of lame. They're, you know, yeah. a few chocolates or something. But it and certainly isn't in real time. Right. And it certainly isn't a, a, you know, a direct interaction that happens. 
And you know, now what people usually do actually is when something shows up and they're not in the middle of an interview, you know, they'll take a picture and post it back to the network. Yeah, I'm gonna do that as soon as the interview's over. That's yeah. why I took a picture of the Yeah, when we get to drinking and just having lunch. But yeah, it'll be it'll be good. So so yeah, so you totally get it, man, as usual, you know, you're yeah. you're there. So I'm sh sure you're uh, trying to raise money and, and all that. The yeah. investors I would expect are like, eh, I don't quite get this because you're only one one place in Silicon Valley right now. And it's not, we it hasn't scaled to worldwide. You haven't become the Uber yet. Yes, right? we don't invest in things like this. I wouldn't go anywhere near a beer app. $1.2 million for, for this? Why? You know what I mean? I don't get it. And, you know, that's what it is. I mean, frankly, you know, right now a lot of investors are looking for that Prius, that you know, the next Instagram or something like that, and this has more moving parts. You know, it's 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 not a it's not a new car. This is a jet fighter. You know, yeah. and it's a completely different animal. And well, let know. me talk to the geek for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they always tell me the truth. <laughs> that's why that's why PR people don't let the uh, engineers on the on the show usually. <laughs> um, we're we're seeing this new thing called uh, Bluetooth smart beacons. Mm -hmm. And in your phone, in your in an iPhone right now, and uh, oh, oh, it, people are buying me all sorts of stuff. Huh? This is two Robert from Doug. Excellent. Yeah. So this, this, this all right, you can cut this off now. <laughs> you know, don't, don't I'm do not it. allowed to go back to work don't after two it. drinks don't according to Rackspace to policy. <laughs> <laughs> um, inside a uh, iPhone is a thing called Beacon. Mm -hmm. uh, the press is calling it iBeacon, but it's it, it's really a, a Bluetooth smart beacon. And this beacon can be turned on and can spray three numbers into the air every second. So right. my phone actually has this on. So it's spraying three numbers in the air every second. And your, your phone, whether it's Android or iPhone, can sense how close it is to this beacon. And there can be a beacon underneath the bar over here. And there can be a beacon underneath this table. Right. So it can actually tell that I'm sitting at this table. Exactly. Right? Are you thinking about how to use uh, these beacons in a new way? Yeah, this is going to open a new new door for indoor location technology. Um, right now, the prices are a little little high, um, but as we see more use of the eye beacons, it's, I think it will become something that Slinger might incorporate in their in yeah. the long term roadmap. They're five dollars right now for uh, one that sits underneath your your uh, table, but there's two hundred and eighty million of them out in iPhones, right? right? So. We could actually build a new kind of social network with this. You would be able to know who's in the bar and auto check them in. You wouldn't even need the check in. You got it. And we would like to do that. We want to remove the check in. The check in is obviously a necessary mechanism for us. Yeah. Right now it's established culture, but everybody knows the check in sort of on the wane. Um, and so we want to, we do want to create a situation where one day Robert Skoll comes down, sits down at table 12, it senses that, just tells everybody that you're here. Yeah. And that, Facilitates I, the I think like this because my brother owns a bar in Virginia, and he, he, you know, we've had arguments about Google Glass. Actually, he likes Google <laughs> Glass because he's like everybody's taking videos and photos in the bar because he has karaoke, he has rock and roll bands. You know, okay, that's you, you don't have to bring me anymore. We can share them, Scoble. We <laughs> can share them. There's, a, there's a bunch thirsty. of guys. There's a, bu there's a bunch of guys behind the camera that have been waiting for this to happen. <laughs> You didn't believe you didn't believe me by the way. You did not believe me. I'm like, it's gonna be a rodeo, and you're like, no. Uh, you I don't know, we should have done that this at five. <laughs> you know. <laughs> gotta get the rich set up, yeah. I almost did it. After we had waffles a couple yeah. of we, a year, months ago, I damn near drove to the Ritz and was like, yeah. let's party. But I figured, hey. Oh, so no. I'll so, drink this. I'll actually I'm gonna start drinking oh, this. Thanks. Next. So, you know, this is the problem with having 600,000 followers on Facebook and people start buying you. Yeah. So, Nike, so, Nike Van Hossler and Celia are great. So here's the thing. We actually have a safety throttle that would normally prevent this from happening. Yeah. But Fernando <laughs> turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a drink. Here. Yeah, right. <laughs> great. Uh, so. Rocky, <laughs> come over here and share the wealth here. <laughs> Cheers, right. guys. Thanks. Oh, my God. Dude, so, this is hilarious. Um, where I'm going with this, because every small business, you know, a bar is a small business. It, it's not, it, usually they're not multinational chains, right? It's usually one or two or three uh, restaurants. Yeah, my, my, my brother has one bar, one bar, right? Does he really? And it's in Virginia, is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. But he needs new ways to get new customers. Advertising really doesn't work. And by the way, if you're in Virginia, you're uh, not allowed to advertise alcohol. So you, you have to be careful about what you say in your ads, you know, because you can say, oh, there's a rock and roll band at Benny's Tavern. Really? Right? But you're not allowed to say, hey, come and get drunk at Benny's Tavern, which yeah. really what, what he hopes you do <laughs> because, uh, you know, alcohol is where he makes his money. Yeah, it's right? the high margin. Uh, 
And that leads to a new, new point, right? I'd love to send, instead of sending my son a, a drink, and he's going to turn 21 in January, I want to send him an Uber. Would love to. You know, yeah. and because if I know, if I saw he's at a bar, I want to send him an Uber and have an Uber pick him up. Right. <laughs> so I don't want him to be drunk driving. So there's you know? your answer to the investors, right? When they say, why in the hell would a bar app need $1.2 million? It's so we can build an API connection to incorporate Tinder, Uber, all these fun partners that once you start talking about real life, real creating real life brick and mortar things for that to happen, yeah. to get your Slinger app to have somebody sling you an Uber, yeah. Um, which from the technical side, I mean, that's, you know, it would, it's going to take some thinking, right? Because it can't yeah. show up instantly like this drink does. It has to wait until you're ready to go. And so we got to put in a button that says, are you ready to go yet? Or whatever, you know, that costs money. It takes programmers. It takes thought. It takes real beautiful UX design, um, which is one of Fernando's absolute specialties. You know, I'm the business side. I go around making the calls to Tinder and the thing. And I have a partner that's the head of the sphere that's doing scaling and all that. But. Uh, tell me a little bit about the technology underneath. Uh, how, yeah. how is this hosted? So when we first started out, back in our garage, we were using a, 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 a web host that only had one shared server. And I, we, I learned quickly that it wasn't going to cut it. Uh, so we discovered the Rackspace startup program. And we applied. And we were lucky enough to be offered uh, free services for up to a year. Um, and not only that, not just the free services, we were connected with someone who was an expert in architecture who sat with us, and not just once, but over a course of a week or two, went through our flow and, and designed the architecture that would work best for us. Yeah. So we moved from one server, one shared hosting server, to eight with two load balancers and a separate DB server, which blew my mind. They were on top of things. They helped, worked with us to get our migration done fast within a week, like six days to get everything uh, across. And they kept checking in, seeing how we were doing. Um, so we are using uh, the Rackspace cloud servers. Um, What's your database server? MySQL. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So you're happy? Very happy. running fast? Very happy. A shout out to the Rackers on the third shift and second shift that I talk to every day. Hey, because you guys get a lot of business like at one in the morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. You better have somebody to call if something's going wrong because it's, it's your business, right? Yeah. It's, and, it's, and we that's that's why we call it fanatical support. We have teams 24 hours a day who are watching your stuff and, and are there for your phone call or your chat, right? And that was the thing for me on the business side, right? Like you can you can spin up an EC2 server and really quick and have a couple of cents go out the window, but that's not what that's not the problem startups have, you know what I mean? The problem of being a startup is you have a couple guys, you're in a garage, you're looking for funding, and when things go wrong, they can they can take you down. So what you need is what Rackspace gave us, which is essentially like three extra heads that I don't have to pay for. Whoa, was that me? Uh, nope, two Robert. <laughs> From Katie. Um, so for me, it was. It feels like I have two more heads underneath us now, right? Because we got, we got, you know, Nathan and Blake came on right away from Rackspace. So Nathan's a third shift racker. Blake was the guy who got us into the startup program, the community side. Yeah. He's in the forums and stuff like that. And instantaneously, it was like we had this whole extra thing. You know, we're using. We not only do we get the servers and all that, but we got a bunch of extra services. Yeah. So we have Mailgun, you know, which is a Rackspace company now that's doing all of our email. So we just moved like wholesale into the suite. And it has made our lives so much better. Because if anything goes wrong, you're not sitting there crying in your in metrics. It's for, for that, I believe that you have cell phone numbers, right? Like you guys, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, my cell phone's on, uh, out in the public. Yeah. So. So and it is this phone, by the way. This yeah. is the kind of thing, right? 1921 calls this it phone. It will ring that phone. And okay. I've, I've done it. That's how I first called you. I called you out of the blue from your blog. Yeah. This is insane, right? Yeah. This isn't like... Well, we believe deeply in this uh, fanatical sport, and part of fanatical sport is be available 24 hours a day, even if I'm sleeping. You can call me. All right, so stop, stop <laughs> ringing, and, and we'll talk about this. So let's say I'm doing a, a party, right. you know, like an anniversary party or something at a bar, and all my friends around the world are like, oh, I can't be there, but I want to buy everybody drinks, blah, blah, blah. Is there a way to gate uh, how fast they come or say, yeah. hey, so, just bring me a drink? So normally you would never experience this kind of yeah. volume. The system, uh, I should really be throwing this to you, but the system has a way of automatically handling volume. Yeah. So yeah. tell me how, how yeah. 
if I get 50 drinks for my table all from around the world because all my friends are going crazy, right? The system has a throttle on it. So we, by lots of testing out in the field, we've learned how much alcohol someone can consume and be reasonable about it. So we included that into the, the, the purchasing process. Yeah. So if you someone sends you your 49th drink, yeah, like this, like this one, <laughs> uh, they'll be notified that yeah. it's in a queue waiting to be processed and delivered. I uh, see. What you need to do is make this happen at the Ritz on a Friday night. <laughs> then it would be all all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. gonna need an Uber home if I try. To, yeah. Try to so the the throttle, just so I can get the legal in there. Yeah. The, yeah. So this is me, right? The throttle is actually set by the venue. Yeah. Because that's a California state thing in yeah. California and New York also. Um, so we're you know so the throttle is actually set by the venue, the actual metering. Yeah. But essentially, under normal circumstances, you would not experience more than four drinks in the space of an hour. But if I have a party, I'd love to, space you know, you're an hour all buying me a drink, it's really for the table, so I'd like to part it out and say, oh, bring this guy a, a, a glass of wine, bring yeah. this guy a beer, you know, and, and charge it to my friends yeah. who, who are helping us out. Right? We didn't build anything for that, but people just do it automatically, right? So when this, you know, when when you know when, when the interview's over, we're, we're gonna turn around to the whole crew, which is standing there feasting their eyes right now, and hand these out. Yeah. And that's what you know people do, and they often say, "Send my friend something now," or they'll change their posts. Yeah. You know, this isn't 100% natural. We wanted yeah. to see. I wanted personally wanted to see how much carnage there could possibly be. A lot of carnage oh my in my life. <laughs> 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 it's like South by Southwest. Yeah. Oh my god. Everybody's passing alcohol. Yeah, yeah. This is this is nuts. And here's the weird thing about this: these people that are sending this, yeah. they're aware of how many drinks you already have. Yeah. We show them. Yeah. On the buying page, how many are here? Yeah. So they're actually. Yeah, here Cat bought me a drink saying starting TGIF early, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no joke, in a big way. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably drink the Moscow Mule and that beer. I can see you taking down one glass of red. Yeah. We got a couple guys over there. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. So we got, we'll, we'll, we'll end up doing it. We'll, we'll get it, but you know. I knew this was going to happen, yeah. and I was just looking forward to seeing but it. This is a good <laughs> example. I'm going to have my 50th birthday party in January, right? And I'm already starting to think, what do we do? And, and not everybody can come to that party, but they want to be part of it, right? right? And so people can buy me drinks or send in a note or something like that. I, I think that's uh, there's something there. And, um, Definitely. And, and next is uh, Cirque du Soleil ticket. You know, or, <laughs> yeah, so that's you can I see mean, where... Because if you really want to uh, oh, make an impression on your brother, is that me? or oh, nope. Jesus, never mind. <laughs> uh, if you're trying to make an impression on your your best friend or uh, or uh, your brother or something like that, and you're trying to have them have a great time in Vegas. My son's 21st birthday is going to be in January as well, so I want you know when he's out with his friends, I'd love to buy him a round of drinks. You know, yeah. I can't be there. Because I'm going to be in Vegas to see yes. That's right. right. And so yeah. I'd love to do this for for him, but I'd love to send other things as well. You know, yeah. hey, let's uh, take you to a Cirque du Soleil show. You know, if you're in Vegas, you know, or in New York, can I buy you tickets to a Broadway show tonight? Yeah. You know? And that's the whole thing. You've actually, yeah. we've got it. Now we're there. You know, I'm starting to put a buzz on, so I got to be careful what I say. But basically, <laughs> basically, now we're there. You know, more yeah. m most of the drinks on the come from 500 miles away. There is no way Steins in Mountain View was going to sell drinks to people 500 miles away other than this. And there's certainly no way that uh, Clown Shoes Party Crasher, which is an, you know, um, I know Clown Shoes is a small brewery, right? There was no way Clown Shoes was going to sell to one of the... From Bob. From your mom? From Bob. Oh, Bob. I was going to say Bob. Was, I was going to say... Bob, Katie. Yeah, we're running out. This is here. I, I took this one from you. This is... Somebody put three names in there. From Dan. Yeah. But the, there was no way this venue was going to sell to people that weren't physically here Krista any other way. So yeah. we're, you know, so you're talking about multiplying the buying power of people who are here by the peop number of people in their social networks. But the people, people on Facebook, UX is all I think about. The people on Facebook do not see this as an ad. They see it as a fun way to interact. You know? Well, we got to end this interview and yeah. uh, pass out the drinks. <laughs> Let me take a picture before everybody grabs a okay, drink. Okay, great. And thanks so much. Where thanks do we Robert. get this? Uh, you can go to slinger.net, yeah. uh, S-L-I-N-G-R. Uh, if you look for, you know, S-L-I-N-G-R, that's Slinger, on any of the app stores, it'll come down, you know, the, the usual stuff. Not Windows, but, you know, um, Google Play or iOS. 
Um, and you know, yeah, that's what we do. Very cool. Thanks. Thanks man. A fun little experiment at Thanks, noon man. on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Start yeah. the weekend. <laughs> we roll on Rack's <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank and you. Thanks for being part of the start for me. Yeah. Oh, it's been Thanks fantastic. Having us. Come, if you want to be like these guys, come to Rackspace Startup Program. It's a uh, uh, just search Google Rackspace Startups and you'll find us. And uh, thanks so much.